Jenk Uger goes on breaking points to talk about a possible presidential run as a Democrat. <sighs> of course, we're going to start with my brother from another mother, Nick. He made a clip of this pro-war Democrat who markets himself as a progressive. Jenk Uger has officially announced his run for president. <laughs> <laughs> the Jimmy Dore derangement syndrome left uh, finally has a candidate that can speak to the uh, issues that they truly care about. Uh, like complaining about Jimmy Dore. Jank is so All right, I kind of messed it up from you guys hearing it. I'm going to rewind it because I was laughing for you guys to hear that part. But that's hilarious to me. <laughs> because usually these clips, they don't have these little... um. They don't edit it. It's just Nick or it's just Nico. But I've noticed in the last couple of weeks, they've been inserting these little clips to kind of give it a little flavor. Let's watch again. Pro-war Democrat who markets himself as a progressive. Jank Uger has officially announced his run for president. <laughs> <laughs> the Jimmy Dore oh, derangement syndrome left finally has a candidate that can speak to the issues that they truly care about, like complaining about Jimmy Dore. Jank is so horrified at the prospect of Donald Trump defeating Joe Biden. His plan is to run, get 20%, and use that to convince someone else to run to defeat Trump. For one, Jank, how are you going to get the 20%? Who is your constituency? <laughs> Democrats don't like him because he has mild criticisms of the party. Republicans don't like him because he's been a diehard Democrat for years engaged in the culture war. And anti-war leftists like myself don't like him because he's a pro-war Democrat. His lack of constituency is exactly why Jank Uger, despite his well-known name and giant political channel, only got 6% in his special election run in 2020. But most importantly, Jank Uger supports Biden's proxy war in Ukraine. He smeared Julian Assange. He's pro-censorship, and he's a union buster who smeared homeless people on behalf of the police state. That's why his presidential run is a joke. But hey, at least it's going to be fun to watch him crash and burn. And, I mean, and essentially, I mean... I wouldn't even cover this story. It's so ridiculous that this guy think he's running or thinks that he's running. But there are several people who, in the comments, of course, brings out the point that he can't run. He was not born in the United States. But you are missing the broader point of the audacity of this guy thinking that he can run for president. Um, I think that's the point. It's a lot. It's a lot. This is actually how I found out. It was Glenn Greenwald. Breaking. The young church, uh, Jank Uger, announces today he is likely running for president as a Democrat. He cites the success he had the other time he run. What? When he came in fourth place in a Democratic primary election for Congress, garnering 6.6%. Uger says his goal is to get to 20% in the polls. More than RFK, Jank Uger thinks he's going to get the equivalent to what RFK Jr. is getting. He's going to outpace Marianne Williamson. Like I said, it's not even serious. Like I almost was like, I shouldn't even cover this shit. But let's <laughs> let's continue to read here. So that, I'm sorry, in 20% in, in polls, so that will convince Gavin Newsom or Gretchen Whitmer to run against Biden, having seen the opportunity that Jank created. That's clown shit. He says he's concerned Biden will lose to Trump given current polling. Here's brother Nick chiming in. The Jimmy Jor derangement left finally found their candidate, <laughs> ideal candidate, who focuses on the true issues like complaining <laughs> about Jimmy Dore. And that's what he, he put exactly in the hotspot video. Jimmy says exactly what America needs right now, a pro- Ukraine war, pro-censorship, union buster, in bed with the DNC and Clinton don uh, donors to, to, to the tune of $24 million. The jokes I didn't have to write, jank. <laughs> Thank you, Jake. Like, you, you don't have to write that. Like I said, this is so laughable. Um, it's silly. It's like a joke. And here's Sabby. This shit is wild. Pardon my language, but this is the clown show of all clown shows. 
And I just want to have my brothers and sisters to chime in before I get there. My reaction to Jenk Uger running for president. Here is my RBM uh, brother uh, JB's reaction to Jenk running for president. JB, JB. I gotta hear that again. <laughs> oh, man. Hilarious. 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 All right, let's finally get to the uh let's finally get to the clip where he actually makes this ridiculous announcement. Jank Uger is so frustrated by Biden's lagging poll numbers that he's staffing up for a 2024 run. Quote, the progressive thought leader and founder of the Young Church appeared on Breaking Points for Crystal Ball and Sagar and Jedi Thursday morning to promote his new book, Justice is Coming. So let me pause here. This is all what this is all about. You know what you do when you're on a book tour? You say a bunch of... uh uh headline catching uh shit that brings more attention to your book so in my opinion this is really about selling his book in my opinion but i continue um towards the end of the interview ball asked uger for his take on the likelihood of someone like gavin newson mounting a serious uh primary challenge to biden you uger uger or jane um argued that there's no chance of it because, like Biden, Newsom is a corporate Democrat. Now, I'm going to pause there because I don't want the rest of it to step on what is said. And that's the Mediate article that I took that from. Uh, to step on what is said in the actual interview that I want to play. And let's do that now. Let's play the actual interview on Breaking Points. Here is Jake Uger. Let's just stay here at Breaking Points. We have a very special guest joining us in yeah. studio, Jake Uger. He is the creator of The Young Turks and also author of the brand new book that we have here, How Progressives Are Going to Take Over the Country and America Is Going to Love It. Oh, uh, I skipped the, the main title, which is Justice Is Coming. So, Indeed. All right. Yes. There we go. <laughs> Justice is here right now. Right. Yes, you, you have arrived. <laughs> Justice has arrived. Um, it's great to see you, Jake. Thank you so Good much for joining us. I know you went through some, some links with the Red Eye and all that to be yeah, able so to get we here and we're really grateful no problem thank you um so before we get into the book any big uh hot takes from the debate last night is doug burger i'm gonna surge into 0. 0.6 okay I, i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna move past this here doug berman burgum stuff let's see if i can get past it a little bit here right here and all yeah um I but, think he's a little better than the first yeah. debate and you got the most speaking time so. yeah true yeah. yeah but all that notwithstanding uh all right, now let's go here. Can't lose democracy in 2024, and that's why I'm really worried about Biden. Interesting. How is this different from the arguments that were made about the quote-unquote coalition of the... I'm going to go back just about 15 seconds to see if there's a, a, a... Anyway. It's about age. We have the young on our side, and it is a, a tsunami. But we just can't lose democracy in 2024, and that's why I'm really worried about Biden. Interesting. How is this different from the arguments that were made about the quote unquote coalition of the ascendant and the idea that, you know, demographics are destiny and therefore, you know, the Republicans are going to be vanquished and then we end up getting Donald Trump and it turns out, you know, Latinos have been shifting. Democrats still win Latinos, but there has been a notable shift there. There's been some shift even uh, more marginal among black, black voters and voters. black men in particular. So isn't it a little bit too uh, triumphant to assume that these demographic groups that support progressive values and tend to support Demo Democrats right now are just going to continue to vote in the same way that they have historically? Yeah, so those are great questions. So there's a, a, a couple of very important differences. So first of all, uh, Democrats took those uh, minority demographics for granted. They're like, oh, black people and Latinos are always going to vote for us. Right. We don't actually have to deliver for them. So for example, this time around, bare minimum was voting rights, and then they didn't do voting rights. Right. Right, they didn't even really try to do voting rights. They almost never deliver on those things. Uh, every time I'm listening to progressive Democrats, though, um, on these uh, items, it's like, do you do you hear what you're saying, Jing? 
you are making an argument not to support the Democrats. Like when progressives are talking, they like when they're talking and not praising, like when they're doing any, it's like you are making arguments why we should not. But then you go on and say we should. That's that's what's so just bizarre to me. Um, let's continue. Joe Biden has delivered on about 20 to 25 percent of his agenda, but not nearly good enough. You have to and you see the discontent in African-American media like Charlemagne and others, et cetera. Latinos now Trump's up to 42 percent. So just saying, hey, you're black or you're brown, vote for me is not good enough. Right. But for young people, they're not going to all of a sudden turn around and hate gay people, hate black people. Their identity is usually said, as I explained in the book, Meta studies show between the ages of 14 and 24, and once it is set, it does not change. Hmm. So they're not going to randomly turn into hateful folks uh, or corporate politics. It's not going to work Why, you in get the old that? days. And here's another giant part of the puzzle. It's us. Okay, breaking points, TYT, et cetera. Because me we have to do better at our propaganda. Is that is that what you're alluding to, uh, uh Jane? Let's see if that's what he's alluding to. Mainstream media is on the precipice of capsizing. Yes. Yeah. Because their their costs are now higher than their revenue for a lot of television. Okay. So when they capsize, they're and they're already bleeding viewers. And their viewers are on average uh, about 70, 70 years old, yeah. right? <laughs> so now, guys, I underestimated that before. I underestimated it in 2020, and I'm honest about that. It turns out those older voters were still ascendant and were and controlled the Democratic primaries, and they're brainwashed by Joe Scarborough and mainstream media. Mm -hmm. And so that was a very powerful force and has been for a long time in this country. You can't underestimate it. But by 2028, it is a completely different ballgame, both in media, which is everything, and in the uh, age demographic. And But all throughout, though, one other giant difference. When corporate Democrats go, okay, you have to vote for us because you're black or brown, right? But then they don't deliver. But progressives say, no, we are going to deliver for you. Hmm. We're going to deliver. Oh, it's almost a whole different segment. Progressives have delivered less then corporate Democrats, what the fuck are you talking about? What would be different than the progressive? You're saying Democrats, you can't promise things to black and brown people and not deliver. Why is that's that's the same uh, sort of uh, analysis or critique of the squad? We're we're saying we're not supporting them again because they're not delivering on promises. They're not not even legislation. They're not even delivering on the. Uh, one of these sort of stance you're taking against democratic leadership that you sold us on as a as a squad member, but I diverge. Let's let's get back to the clip. Live on paid family leave, higher minimum wage, relieving student debt, public option, Medicare for all, you name it. We actually mean it. So who's our standard bearer? Has been for a long time is Bernie Sanders. Mm -hmm. And everybody knows whether you like him or not, whether you agree with him or not, he's probably the most honest man in American politics in our lifetime. I think he are you talking about the same Bernie Sanders who pretends like there's no Nazis in Ukraine? You talking about that guy? Are you talking about the Bernie Sanders who's saying we're going to lose democracy if a clown gets in office? I guess if that makes you most honest. But being the most honest in a room filled of pathological liars says what? I think even the right wing knows that and definitely independents know that. I'm not saying Bernie's going to run again. But our standard bearer is honest. And the other guys have Trump and corporatists. So let's They're not going to win the young doing that. Yeah, let's get into that. And that's why it's interesting. You've been talking a little bit about Joe Biden. Let's put this tweet up there on the screen. Now, for example, you say Biden is losing by 10 points in this poll. Even if it's half wrong, it's still an epic disaster. The Democrat has to win the popular vote by five to win the Electoral College. Right now, Biden is 15 points behind where he wake up. Now, you mentioned Bernie Sanders. I believe Bernie is, what is he, 82? I wanted to put the tweet up and read it, but opinion, something run. else comes uh, up when you hit point. pause. So you talked about standard bearers, but there doesn't, I, from an outsider's perspective, I don't see a standard bearer in the progressive movement. I've seen a lot of fracturing. There's a lot of fighting going on. There is no standard bearer in the progressive movement. Uh, you're you're correct, Sagar. Some like there's a lot of different theories of change and all that. So how how, if you want to mount a challenge to Biden, what does it look like? Give us some actual names of what that would be and then the fights that would ensue within that. Yeah, so uh, first of all, I agree with you. Yeah. Uh, Bernie's got age issues as Biden and Trump does. And not only that, I love Bernie. 
but he just doesn't like to fight. He yeah. doesn't like to fight other Democrats. He doesn't have he a doesn't. killer instinct. Yeah, and yeah. you can't win if you don't yeah. fight, right? You got to make your own case. That's just <laughs> the milk to watching milk toast people call out somebody else for not fighting. Jenk Uger didn't want to fight with force to vote. That's the same problem Biden has. He just never makes his own case. Mm. So, uh, look, guys, what's going to happen is there's one strong populist progressive is going to rise, and they're going to capture the country with lightning speed. Interesting. So right now, do we have that? Not, not really. Mm. And so, why do I say that? Well, look, you know, if you want to be the strong leader, you got to step up. That's what strong leaders do. They don't go, well, Biden didn't give me permission. If if you're worried about Biden giving you permission, you ain't it. Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Now, having said that, for 2024, the progressive vote is almost gone, right? So there's only one, like, it's so bad, I seriously consider running, because nobody will do it, <laughs> for God's sake. The professional managerial class is just very, they're terrible navigation. There are terrible navigators and captain for this United States left ship. And Jenk is proving that this is not about like actually trying to get help to people fast. This is just only about trying to do something political that has never been done. It's the only thing, the only way, reason I can explain why do you keep trying to get people all those things through the Democratic Party that does not want progressives, that, uh, 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 have super PACs against progressives. Hakeem Jeffries is against progressives. It just doesn't make any sense to me. But um, I diverge. Let's let's get back. Sick. It's a golden opportunity. The guys in this it is in the terrible. in the thirties in the polling. That we're whistling past the graveyard. He's going to lose. He's uh, he had, he was at fifty two when he won in twenty twenty, and he won by a razor thin yes. margin of forty four thousand votes Oops. in the electoral Girl. college. Now fifteen points lower. We're just kidding ourselves. It's a disaster. The handwriting's on the wall. He's going to lose. So at this point, soccer, mm. give me anybody. Give okay. me anybody. Give yeah. me Andy Bashir <laughs> in Kentucky. Uh. Give me Governor Shapiro in Pennsylvania. I'll even take Whitmer, okay? Uh. <laughs> okay, I don't care. We just, anybody but Biden, because it's not personal. I don't mind Biden. I would prefer someone more progressive, et cetera. But at this yeah. point, it's not about that. He doesn't We've mind Biden. to win. Is democracy on the line or isn't it? Because mm. I think Democrats are full of crap. They say stuff like they say, we agree on 90% of things. But Jenk Uger just said, I don't have a problem with Joe Biden. He doesn't have a problem with the hundred plus billion dollars to Ukraine. He doesn't have a problem with the Senate parliamentarian being used not to get $15 minimum wage. He doesn't have a problem that they reneged on voter rights. Doesn't have a problem we're marching to nuclear war. Doesn't have a problem with what we're, uh, the, what we're uh, showcasing about what we want to do with China. But we agree on 90% of things. I'm starting to think the strategy is the most important thing second to policy. So this is what the professional love matter. Oh, we have just different strategy. No, we don't have different pathways to get there. You can't call your pathway a pathway if it's rigged. But I'm I'm starting to go on a tangent. Let me make sure I stay. like it. Oh, that guy's a fascist. He's going to kill democracy. So we're running a guy who's a wounded antelope, <laughs> who 72 percent of Americans think is not even going to make it through a second term. Uh -huh. There's no one on planet Earth that could look at those polling numbers and say, yeah, he's going to win. If they do say that, they're definitely lying. So uh, it's hard to disagree with much of that. There is no. Disagree. However, yeah, I will say that I do have some nervousness. In my ideal scenario, you know, Biden with, would withdraw. We'd have a real democratic process. I'm not of this view that like, like democracy is bad for electoral chances, et cetera. I actually think it's really good. It allows people to make the case. It allows democratic voters to choose the candidate that they would be think would be best suited, et cetera, et cetera. I couldn't pause it when she said it, but let me go back and make sure I heard what I heard here. There's no one on planet Earth that could look at those polling numbers and say, yeah, he's going to win. If they do say that, they're definitely lying. Wouldn't that apply to Crystal Ball? But now let's listen to what Crystal Ball says in response to that. So uh, it's hard to disagree with much of that. There is no disagreement. It's hard to disagree with much of that, but Crystal Ball and Kyle Kalinske are going on speaking tours telling you to vote for Biden. But at the same time, you are now saying it's hard to disagree what Jenk said, which is that he is going to lose. Jenk didn't just say, oh, he's terrible. He said he's going to lose. 
So you know if a candidate is going to lose, you're still gonna you're still gonna waste your vote. Isn't that wasting your vote on somebody you know is gonna lose? Why wouldn't you then vote for somebody whose policies align with yours? Like a Cornell West, like a Claudia De La Cruz. Doesn't make any sense. It's a grift for these people. However, yeah. I will say that I do have some nervousness. In my ideal scenario, you know, Biden would, would withdraw. We'd have a real democratic process. I'm not of this view that like democracy is bad for electoral chances, et cetera. I actually think it's really good. It allows people to make the case. It allows democratic voters to choose the candidate that they would be think would be best suited, et cetera, et cetera. But I do worry that there are some candidates that I feel like would be worse than Biden, not only electorally, like I think Kamala Harris would be worse electorally. Yeah. I think Pete Buttigieg would protect, you know, potentially be worse electorally. But I also think that they would be a lot worse on policy, because even though I have a million criticisms of Biden. She just said Pete Buttigieg and Kamala Harris would be worse than Biden on policy. Oh, man. Uh, Biden on policy. She's about to go into a spill that Biden is good on policy. This is fucking insane. This is the professional managerial class. We have no business teaming up with these people. Serious radicals, serious people who want change have zero business teaming up with these clowns. Let's continue. And that we talk about here all the time on labor issues with regard to the National Labor Relations Board, oh on the fact God. that he went the freaking picket line first president in history, he is better than the Obama Democrats in some key ways. I mean, they've tried to do industrial policy. That's been a significant step forward. They haven't done enough on the consumer. The NLRB rises again in this professional managerial uh, class discussion. So let's let's do this. This is the analogy. The NLRB is like one state out of 50. And the entire Joe Biden presidency is like all 50 states. So that's how the analogy, the groundwork for the analogy. She's saying that we should reelect Joe Biden based off what he did for a single state, Florida, overlooking all the bad shit he did in 49 other states. You see the ridiculousness of this? Even if what we were to take face value what you're saying about the nlrb that is like this that's like a crumb of a crumb don't get it but i probably shouldn't get it consumer side they haven't done enough on the worker side etc you know they let all the social safety net stuff from covid expire and that's why so many americans are feeling really stressed and struggling financially yeah but i can see a lot other options that would actually be worse both on policy and what would make them worse then with Joe Biden, like, for example, on Ukraine, what policy on Ukraine would be worse if Kamala or Pete got in? What policy on the $15 minimum wage? What Like, she is acting like these people aren't controlled by donors. They're controlled by donors. They do the same on, exact thing. Uh, on, like, being able to win and defeat Trump. Do yeah. you agree with that? No. Uh, so you think Kamala ah! would be better? No. Uh, so let me be clear. <laughs> okay. okay. So number one... Uh, let me hear that again, because I, I want to before I comment, I want to make sure I heard what I heard. Like being able to win and defeat Trump. Do yeah. you agree with that? Wait, wait, wait. Let me let me rewind a little bit more to, to hear what she says here. COVID expire, and that's why so many Americans are feeling really stressed and struggling financially. Yeah. But I can see a lot other options that would actually be worse, both on policy and on uh on like being able to win and defeat Trump. Do yeah. you agree with that? No. Uh, so you think Kamala would be better? No. Uh, so let me be clear. <laughs> okay. okay, they're the same. So number one, uh, this is not about Biden's record. If we were started this primary a year ago when the Republicans started, or six months ago, it would be about Biden's record. And Biden's record is mixed. Yeah. So m normal Democrats like Barack Obama do five percent of the things that they promise, and then the media declares them champions of the world. Right? Mm -hmm. Biden has done about twenty percent of his agenda, which for politicians is a bit stunning. It still sucks, but it's like way better than some other politicians. Yeah. You're right; his record on labor is pretty good. A bunch of spotty areas, but Why overall pretty good. Now, but I'm not arguing. Do you see why we can't team up with people who describes a person who breaks a strike? The highest thing you can do against labor, you, you can't turn around and then say that person is a good on labor. That is factually just wrong. You can't be both. Arguing that, guys. It doesn't matter how great we think Biden is. 
if he loses. Mm -hmm. So you, look, an incumbent under 50 points, the old rule, everybody in Washington knows this, cannot win or does not win. An incumbent under 40 points, it's unprecedented. Jimmy I've, Carter. Yeah. I've never yeah. seen it in my lifetime. It's not going to happen. On, on the day that he won with only 44,000 votes in the Electoral College in three swing states, he had a four and a half point lead, not in a poll, in the actual vote, the popular vote. Right. So the Democrat needs a five point lead for us to feel a tiny bit comfortable about saving democracy. Right. So when we see polls like 46, 46, that's a loss for Democrats nationally. Because when you translate that into electoral politics, this is why they have this number where, no, when the poll, the Democrats have to be ahead by a certain percentage. It fluctuates. Right now, it's about 50, uh, 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 5%. It fluctuates higher or lower. But they have to be ahead in national polls for when they translate into the electoral politics for them to win. And that's what Jane is saying. 5% ahead. So 46-46 is a loss for Democrats. 47-46 is a loss for Democrats. Joe Biden needs to be somewhere 46 to 51 to even be in the running to beat anybody in the uh, Republican uh, Party. So let's uh, continue. And Biden is currently losing to Trump. So I'm not having a conversation about substance yeah. at this point. I wish I was. Mm. I'm having a conversation about who can win. Now, the this crazy thought that people in Washington have, they have all this mythology. And in the book, I break down all the mythology. In this case, though, the line is... Well, if it's not Biden, then we go to the line of succession and Kamala Harris is next. When the hell did we become a monarchy? Yeah. There's no line of succession. That's not a thing. It's a thing. If uh, if some, God forbid, something were to happen to President Biden, then you have a line of succession when they're in office. Mm. But not in a primary. We're not the British royalty. Kamala Harris isn't anointed. Neither is Biden or shouldn't be. Right. And, and now people in media are freaking out a little bit. They're beginning to see I'm right. James Carville's freaking out. David yeah. Ignatius at Washington Post mm -hmm. is freaking out. But they're frozen in amber because they're like, well, we have to bow down to Biden. I mean, uh, what would the king say otherwise? And we're Democrats. We we obey authority, right? No, we're Democrats. We don't obey authority, right? Yeah. And then they say, well, if we get rid of Biden, well, we have to go to the crown princess. But Jake, On what planet? Unfortunately, a lot of Democrats do obey yeah, authority. Kind of I mean, that's what that. we saw yeah. in 2020. Like you. Like you. I might come back to this, but I do want to get to the actual announcement. Like, I might come back to this to just finish out. But I, I, I can't hear no more of their assessment on what's going on because you're part of the problem. You're the white You're the white moderate that MLK, both of you here, everybody in this screen, everybody and on the screen like, here. How hopeful are you that we could end up with someone other than Joe Biden as nominee? Like, do you think, because you say... Yeah, I mean, because yeah. you say, listen, Gavin Newsom's not going to run against him. That goes for every one of the corporate Democrats. I mean, Gavin Newsom is the one making the most, like, doing the most right now. And it's very clear he's not going to jump yeah, in this he's race running. against Joe. So do you think there's a chance? Crystal, we are definitely in an unsolvable riddle. Yeah. Because the corporate Democrats say, I will not disobey. I will always bow my head. Right. Right. And the progressives say, well, I can't run. The mainstream media will destroy me. They'll yeah. destroy my life. Mm -hmm. They'll destroy my career. Etc. Right. Right. So how do we get past that? That's why I'm desperate enough to think maybe I should do it. And I'll tell you why. Because let's say that somebody like me gets in the race. Yeah. The Democratic voters are dying for an alternative. Mm -hmm. They keep saying in every poll, for God's sake, give us someone else. Give us someone else. If someone like me were to get to 20 points, you have any idea how quick Newsom and Whitmer would enter the race? Hmm. So are you seriously, you're seriously considering it? Like, yeah, I'm considering me. it. Okay. And I'll so tell you why. It's going to happen. RFK Jr. is at 20%. You know, Marianne's at like 10%, something no, like that. No, but right. RFK Jr., first yeah. of all, he's not a 20 anymore. He okay. peaked at 20 for a brief yeah. moment until Democrats found out he's not a Democrat. Okay. Okay, then he went, uh, he, then he dove down. And Marianne got butchered by mainstream media. Mm -hmm. They made up things about crystals, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So I love Marianne. I, I mm -hmm. you know, if... If she could somehow break through media, great, wonderful, et cetera. But it's taken a while and she hasn't broken through yet. So we need someone to be super aggressive. And if they, tell, uh, let me ask you this way. If you get, again, someone, anyone, it doesn't have to be progressive, mm -hmm. gets to 20 or 25, an outsider, right? This whole town panics and Newsom and Whitmer go in immediately. I, think, I do think Is that a right? Of I don't that. know, because it already happened with RFK and they just ignored him and they went after him. And he, yeah, like that was, said, that was no, that was before when they were convinced that Biden was going to win and RFK, everybody knew was a flash in the pan because he's not really a Democrat. Maybe. But I, so, Jake, tell me, tell me more about your thinking. Yeah. 
timeline? What are you weighing? Right. How serious are you? Yeah. Give us the details. So I already thought about it before and I rejected it because I know what they're going to do. So I, I had to go off screen. I, there's no way I would be able to let that play through. So I'm like, I need to let this video play through for this particular part. So now I'm going to go back and give my analysis, but I did want to just let it play through for about two, three minutes while I did that. So let's go now. Now I'm going to stop and start and give my analysis. Here. Bank is like, how hopeful are you that we could end up with someone other than Joe Biden as nominee? Like, do you think, cause Percentage. you say, yeah, I mean, yeah. cause you say, listen, Gavin Newsom's not going to run against him. That goes for every one of the corporate Democrats. I mean, Gavin Newsom is the one making the most like doing the most right now. And it's very clear he's not going to jump in this race against Joe. So do you think there's a chance? Crystal, we are definitely in a unsolvable riddle. Yeah. Because the corporate Democrats say, I will not disobey. I will always bow my head. Right. right? And the progressives say, well, I can't run. The mainstream media will destroy me. They'll yeah. destroy my life. Mm -hmm. They'll destroy my career, et cetera. Right. Right. So how do we get past that? That's why I'm desperate enough to think wow. maybe I should do it. And I'll tell you why, because let's say that somebody like me gets in the race. Yeah. The Democratic voters are dying for an alternative. Mm -hmm. They keep saying in every poll, for God's sake, give us someone else. Give us someone else. If someone like me were to get to 20 points, you have any idea how quick Newsom and Whitmer would enter the race? Hmm. So are you seriously, you're seriously considering it? Like, yeah, I'm considering me. it. Okay. And I'll so tell you why. It's going to happen. RFK Jr. is at 20%. You know, Marianne's at like 10%, something no, like that. No, but right. RFK Jr., first yeah. of all, he's not at 20 anymore. He okay. peaked at 20 for a brief yeah. moment until Democrats found out he's... Who believes that Cenk Uger can get the same freaking pull 20% as RFK? Like, nobody on the planet believes that, including the two people that you're talking to but what's unique and what's awkward it has to be awkward that you're talking to a guy who's saying we need somebody else in the race when your support you are supporting a particular person named marianne williamson do you see how they're not really serious about any of this shit you're oh marianne williamson marianne williamson and then about four weeks ago five weeks ago you and your husband started talking about pushing joe biden and now today you got Jenk Uger on talking about he's going to be a, he's going to get into the race. These people they don't they don't have any sort of like uh, I, I don't I don't want to do I, I want. But he's that. not a Democrat. Okay. Okay. Then he went. Uh, he, then he dove down. And Marianne got butchered by mainstream media. They mm -hmm. made up things about crystals, etc. Yeah. So I love Marianne. I I mm -hmm. you know if. If she could somehow break through media, great, wonderful, et cetera. But it's taken a while and she hasn't broken through yet. So we need someone to be super aggressive. And if they, tell, uh, let me ask you this way. If you get, again, someone, anyone, it doesn't have to be progressive, mm -hmm. gets to 20 or 25, an outsider, right? This whole town panics and Newsom and Whitmer go. With so the Hunter Biden story and the possible the Hunter Biden story and the possible leaking of information that Joe Biden did something bad through the impeachment inquiry, that doesn't bring in these people. David Ignatius article reported on Morning Joe, like the establishment that they listen to, Joe Biden listens to David Ignatius. That doesn't get any of these other candidates in. But somehow, or, or and RFK is in a race, reaches 20%. ML, uh, Marianne Williamson is a race at one point got 10%. I don't think now, but at one point got 10%. None of that stuff does it. Joe Biden's poll numbers are horrific. None of that stuff does it. But Jake getting in is going to tip the hat to some people. Okay. And when is Santa Claus coming over? Go in immediately. I, think, I do think is that right? Of I don't that. know because it already happened with RFK and they just ignored him and they went after him. And he, yeah, like that was said, that was down. no, that was before when they were convinced that Biden was going to win and RFK. Everybody knew it was a flash in the pan because he's not really a Democrat. Maybe. But I, so, Jake, tell me, tell me more about your thinking. Yeah. Timeline. What are you weighing? Right. How serious are you? Yeah. Give us the details. So I already thought about it before and I rejected it because I know what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're an outsider, a radical. They're going to dredge up things from 1987. <laughs> and when you were a junior in junior. You mean the 1987 stuff when you were saying all kinds of shit about women? Yeah. So, you know, so how exactly do you think you're going to get 20% when they're going to bring out all the blades against you, as you just stated. Remember, Bernie Sanders had to unendorse you in your own race when that shit came out. This is this is Looney Tune talk, but it's it's good for entertainment, I guess. 
junior high school. They already did that to you. Yeah. I think they did that to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. Of course. And, and look, if we're being honest, the number one problem is mainstream media. Mm. Sure. Ma mainstream media is the shock troops of corporate politicians, both corporate Democrats and corporate Republicans. Yeah. Their job is to eviscerate any outsider. So that's why do you think progressives aren't running? I've talked to at least half a dozen progressives and tried to convince them to go in the race. And they're like, I don't want my life ruined. Who's going to ruin their life? Joe Biden? He's in a bunker somewhere. No, it's going to be ABC and NBC and CBS and CNN, MSNBC, New York Times, Washington Post. They're going to go to any outsider and shred them to pieces. Sure. And I'm now so desperate for making sure that we win that I think I'm already destroyed, okay. right? Like <laughs> they've already attacked me 10,000 times, right? So come at me, bro. So, Crystal, oh it, it's crazy for, for me to consider it, right? Yeah. But that's the times we're in. If no, like literally no one else will do it. It's insane. So we're I don't want to go quietly into that good night. And right now we are 100 percent on a track to go quietly into that good night. So what's the timeline, as Crystal said? So when are you gonna decide? No, I look, yeah. if I, if I'm gonna do it, if anybody's gonna do it. They gotta go now. Yeah. Well, announce it. Are right. you? Are you? Yeah. Have you yeah. thought about staff? Have you yeah. thought yeah. about a plan? Have you reached? I mean, we know yeah. you know donor networks, all those sorts of things. Have yeah. you started taking real steps? So, if you're gonna run a campaign this late, you can't go traditional, right? Mm -hmm. You can't be like, oh, I'm gonna collect endorsements from politicians. Oh, and I'm gonna build up my base tiny bit. No, you gotta go and hope for a grassroots tsunami. The good news is, when I ran for Congress, I mean, it was a tiny little raise. We raised like 1.3 million in. In three months, I mean, if anybody can raise money, it's me from the grassroots, mm -hmm. right? And if anybody can raise money, it's you. I, I, the grassroots part you can take out. You can call up Dave and Katzenberg, though. Or wait, what was his name? I don't remember. I forget his first name. I know it's Katzenberg. This is just silly talk. I, I really don't feel like we we even need to go longer with this. I can't believe there's there's two, less than two minutes. Let me see. Let me and see I'm a successful businessman, if I might say so myself. <laughs> I have some credibility in running things, managing things, et cetera. Uh, so Union busting, have too. Have I reached out to staff? I have, okay? Now, the problem is everybody thinks, well, how the hell are we going to beat these guys, right? So if I go in, it's going to be Threadbare staff, Threadbare website. You and have no see, money. Is there momentum? You can raise because money, but you're not going to have a staff, though. No, That's no, what he no, just no, said. No. Biden, Biden. Even if he's in the 20s, Making I don't care. Shit. I don't want. I don't mind losing. I don't mind losing. You're being impolite, which is totally possible, right? So if that's I think, the, yeah, I think there's a decent contingent, though. That's yeah, I think that. Yeah, and if that's the case, then at least I left it all on the battlefield, or whoever does it. For God's sake, don't make me do it. Like have someone else run, right? Don't but make me do it. do it. And so I want to leave it all on the battlefield. And I don't want to say, well, like everyone else, I wanted to be polite. So I, we lost democracy because we thought it would hurt Mussolini's opponent's feelings. Oh right? Does anybody remember Mussolini's opponent? I don't. Those These people are just grifting. These people are just grifting. Everybody in, on that screen, from Jank to Crystal to Sagar, grifting. That's what they're doing.